China could soon have more Christians than any other country. But not if the Communist Party can help it. China's war on Christianity continues. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest China news and click the notification bell so you get an alert when we publish a new episode. The Chinese Communist Party is officially atheist. In fact, if you want to be a party member, you need to give up your religious beliefs. The party has been fighting a war against religion since the very beginning. Nevertheless, a lot of people in China still want religion. By 2030, China's total Christian population, including Catholics, would exceed 247 million, placing it above Mexico, Brazil, and the United States as the largest Christian congregation in the world. So the Chinese Communist Party is trying a new tactic. If you can't beat them, join them. Or actually, make them join you, and then beat them. The party officially recognizes five religions in China, Buddhism, Taoism, Islam, Catholicism, and Christianity and it wants to control these religions by making them Sinicize. For the party, Sinicize doesn't mean make more Chinese. It means bringing them under the party's control. They just want to make it seem like it's about making things more Chinese because that sounds way better than communize or socialismify. Even though that's actually what it is. For example, one of the goals of a government work plan for promoting Chinese Christianity between 2018 and 2022 is Thought reform. Authoritarian communist states and thought reform go together like peanut butter and jelly. As one high-ranking Chinese Politburo member said, religious leaders must steer religions forward with Chinese socialism. Whatever your belief is, you must first abide by law. And let's just say the Communist Party is making the law very unfriendly towards Christians in China. Here are 10 ways. Number 10. Surveillance. The first step in making sure Christians are really following Chinese law and sinicizing is being able to watch them at all times. China's Zhejiang province is sometimes known as China's Jerusalem for having a large number of Christians. And the local government there is forcing churches to install surveillance equipment. It's to fight terrorism. No, seriously, that's what local officials said. Because nothing says fighting terrorism like targeting innocent people and putting them under surveillance. And if people protest the cameras, well, the party can always blame terrorism that they need to fight with even more cameras. Number nine, online suppression. 2018 saw a whole bunch of new regulations aimed at curbing Christianity's rise. One proposed law targets online religious content, restricting images or even descriptions of religious activities, from praying and chanting to burning incense. Okay, I don't know who goes online to describe burning incense or why, but how sinister could that possibly be? Exceptions to online postings are made for certain officially recognized organizations, but it seems all individual posting would be banned. According to China legal expert Jeremy Dom, a founder of China Law Translate, the regulations were worded so broadly and vaguely that technically, even photos of a wedding would fall under them. Unless you pick the right wedding venue. Number 8. Limiting Donations In 2017, the Communist Party updated its rules regulating religions. The new rules say donations from foreign groups and individuals are banned and donations over $15,000 need to be reported to authorities. So for instance, as an American, if you donate to a Chinese church that's helping with disaster relief, the church will be punished if they accept it. And even Chinese donors who want to contribute a lot need to be reported to the authorities. I imagine that's because the authorities want to give such generous people an award. And that award is extra surveillance. Congratulations, smile, you're on camera forever. Number seven, tearing down crosses. In just two years, authorities in Zhejiang province took down more than 1,000 crosses on churches. Sometimes, they just accidentally burst into flames. What a clear building code violation. No wonder these fire traps have to be taken down. And sometimes the problem is so serious, the entire church has to go. Here's one example, the Sangjiang Church. Impressive, right? It took 12 years and $4.7 million in donations to build. Authorities demolished it overnight. And guess what? 
That was a state-sanctioned church. It had official approval from the local government, who even lauded it as a marvel of engineering. But what the Communist Party giveth, it can take away if. Number six, locking people up. The Chinese Communist Party decided to celebrate Christmas last year the only way it knew how, with mass, arrest of Christians. To be fair, they all belong to the early reign church, which was known for extremist views. What kind of extremist views? Every year, the church commemorates victims of the Tiananmen Square Massacre in 1989. Clearly, that church requires thought reform. Early reign is an example of what's known in China as house churches. Those are churches that are not officially registered with the state. Unlike the state-sanctioned Three Self-Patriotic Movement and the China Patriotic Catholic Association. And yes, that is seriously what they're called. According to Bob Fu, founder of the U.S.-based Christian rights organization China Aid, there were more than 10,000 cases of detention of Christians in 2018. And what happens to these Christians held in detention? I mean, at least Chinese officials aren't feeding them to the lions, right? Of course not. Even the party knows that life is valuable. And that's why... Number five, they're killing Christians for their organs. If you've been watching China Uncensored for a while, you know the Chinese Communist Party has been killing people for their organs and selling them to rich people who need transplants. Now, I'm not saying this happens to most Christians who are detained, but according to this report, Every year, the Chinese Communist Party harvests between 60 and 100,000 organs from unwilling prisoners of conscience. It seems the majority are Falun Gong practitioners, but many still come from Tibetan Buddhists, Uyghur Muslims, and of course, select house Christians. Yes, only select Christian organs. Number four, targeting the children. You know, the Chinese Communist Party always thinks of the children. That's why in Jiangxi province, children have been forbidden from attending church. And apparently, if you're on welfare, you'll get it taken away if you go to church. In Zhejiang province, officials banned Sunday school. Chinese children were absolutely devastated. But don't worry, kids. Churches are getting around that order by switching Sunday school to Saturday. Brilliant. These regulations focused on children are actually a lot like the ones in China's Xinjiang region, home to the ethnic Uyghurs who are mostly Muslim. People are supposed to report on their neighbors if they see anyone luring children into religion. Maybe the Communist Party has confused religions with unmarked white vans. That would explain why they think religions are so dangerous, which is why they want people to... Number three, renounce the faith. Last year, Voice of America uncovered that Christians were being forced to sign forms like this one. It says, I had limited understanding of Christianity. Taking on Christianity as my belief is also blindly following the trend. Now I have a more comprehensive understanding of religion and religious beliefs. After further studying Christianity, I have a clear understanding of my spiritual needs. I announce that I will not participate in Christian religious activities from now on, and I will no longer believe in Christianity. Yeah, I think I'm getting a better idea of the kind of thought reform the party wants. Number two, your own personal Xi Jinping. Christians often talk about helping the poor. So I think actually a lot of Christians must appreciate the party's recent directive. If you want to escape poverty, take down that picture of Jesus and put up a picture of Communist Party leader Xi Jinping. That gem came from a local government poverty relief program that seeks to transform believers in religion into believers in the party. And it worked so well. After local officials made personal visits to Christian homes, more than 600 villagers voluntarily got rid of the religious texts and paintings they had in their homes and replaced them with 453 portraits of Xi Jinping. Really, I think they'd have done better to have one per person. I mean, this is communism. Who wants to share? And finally, number one, edits of biblical proportions. Burning Bibles was so 2018. Now the party is retranslating and annotating the Bible to find commonalities with socialism and establish a correct understanding of the text. Finally, after thousands of years of erroneous biblical interpretation, the Communist Party is giving us the correct understanding of the good book. I happen to have a copy right here. Let's see. 
The first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me, except as required by Chinese law. Okay, that's weird. Um, thou shalt not kill, unless thou art killing rightists, counter-revolutionaries, running dogs, separatists, religious extremists, hostile foreign forces, etc. Etc? What do they mean, etc? Okay, what about the New Testament? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Anything except Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, Deng Xiaoping theory, the theory of the three represents, the scientific outlook on development, and Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for new era. Wow! Revisionist Bible study is so much fun. And mandatory. So, what do you think of the crackdown on Christians? And what do you expect to be in the Communist Party version of the Bible? And now it's the time you've all been waiting for when I answer a question from a member of my 50 Cent Army, the fans who support China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jordan Larimore asks, is the 610 office part of the People's Armed Police or is it a completely separate organization? Do they share intelligence like the CIA and FBI do? Well, speaking of cracking down on religious people, the 610 office was created in 1999 by then leader Jiang Zemin. He used it mainly to persecute Falun Gong practitioners. But his real purpose was probably to establish his own private intelligence and police agency outside the rule of law. Think of it like having your own Nazi Gestapo. Whoever controls it has enormous power, including power over political rivals. So forget interagency cooperation. The 610 office was in fact established to outrank other agencies like the Public Security Bureau. The head of the 610 office has always been a top-ranked official from the Politburo Standing Committee, the group of seven men that rules the Chinese Communist Party. Operationally, it's completely separate from the People's Armed Police. There's been some talk recently of Xi Jinping disbanding the 610 office, but don't get too excited. First, it's probably just a power play against Jiang Zemin's cronies. Second, it might be like five years ago when China's Congress voted to end re-education camps and then four years later partially legalized them again, but this time called them vocational training centers. But to answer your question precisely, Jordan, not much is known about the secret workings of the 610 office. Do they share intelligence? Maybe, sometimes, but they are in no way like the FBI. If you'd like me to do an episode on the 610 office, let me know in the comments below. You know, be like Jordan and support China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. The link is below, and I might answer your question on the show next time. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.